using a greeny blue here with touches of pink and violet colour. So that colour will come through here and there into the painting later on to create colour harmony. But it also takes the pressure off this white canvas. So once you've covered your canvas, allow it to dry. And then what I'm doing here is I'm drawing a very simple outline of some mountains. This is from my imagination. And my tip really, my one main tip, and I tell this to my students all of the time, is keep things simple at the beginning. Try not to paint the blades of grass and tiny buildings and, you know, little trees here and there. Just paint the basic shape. So what I'm painting here, I've divided up the sky, mountains, and sort of like I'm going to paint a waterfall, which is that bit going through the middle these just these three large elements here you don't need anything else at this stage try to think of using a camera with a viewfinder and at the moment everything is out of focus keep it like that at the beginning that is my one big tip it really does work do not think about details once you do you start putting in little details and you lose the composition. This way you're really open to creativity. I can't stress it enough. It does make such a difference. I've been teaching acrylic painting and watercolour for so many years. And this is the style and method I adopt, with, I adopt with my students, especially beginners. It takes so much pressure off. You can see there I've got some instructions there on screen to guide you. So I'm mixing up the blue, the pink and the white to create this sky colour. Lots of white in the middle, blending with my fingertips. And I'm adding a tiny touch of the pink and the yellow here you'll see that I'm sort of trying out different colors blending so there's a little bit more yellow and pink there just to create this sort of dull purpley color at the top of the sky and I'm blending with my one inch flat brush here it's a synthetic brush again blending with my fingertips but you can do this with continue doing this with the brush as well but it creates a lovely atmospheric effect As you can see there I've added the pink yellow and white and I'm just painting a lovely light orange color wet on dry on top of the blue acrylics are opaque so it covers that blue background but there can be little bits of blue coming through and I'm just using blue and pink to create some of the darks on the mountain here as well blending away see this as blocking in these shapes with my flat one inch brush you can even use a larger brush if you like but it's all the darks and acrylics you work dark to light keeping everything simple but remember it's not about the detail and that is my one tip 
keep it loose just keep those large shapes working there I'm actually painting wet on dry now my painting has dried I'm mixing up some white blue and pink for some light colors in the sky still want to keep some of my underpainting there but I'm blending in these lovely soft colors still using these three primary colors you can paint skies any color so don't try to copy what I'm doing you know experiment and see what happens and try to be creative again I'm blending with my fingertips and I'm going to use the flat brush as well. So I'm painting some lighter colours on the mountain using blue and yellow with a touch of white and just using again very broad strokes, no details here, almost half close your eyes. You could actually use a mountain scene if you wanted to for this and use the same sort of techniques but sometimes it just takes the pressure off painting from your imagination. But we are all different. This is a lovely light blue here. It's the blue and the white. And I'm just sort of dash painting dashes of this lighter tone on to the mountain here. And I've swapped now with my palette knife. I'm going to paint some white straight onto this dry surface for a waterfall. Um, coming out from the top of the mountain and just sort of scraping it on to this dry surface here. It is just a plastic palette knife, but you could use a plastic store card to apply this as well. Um, it's so much fun to do and the light and the white of the paper is quite dramatic but again it's a very simple sort of shape here it's not fiddly details it just keeps everything loose and as a beginner most beginners always just head for those details and they go down this sort of road where they're just painting all this detail and they can't see the bigger picture this way you can create quite beautiful pictures using very simple shapes shapes lights and darks and beautiful sort of um, harmonious colors so I'm mixing up a little bit of red and yellow and white to create some lighter tones here in the mountains it's quite nice using a plastic card or a palette knife because you get these lovely sort of simple shapes and it takes all that fiddliness off. Sometimes you get the worst thing to do is get a teeny tiny brush out and start fiddling and painting details. Um, I always think sometimes if you want details, take a photograph. We want to get the paints out. We want to explore our creativity and lose ourselves in painting rather than getting stressed trying to copy something exact. So I'm just sort of mixing up still these three primary colours, mix them together, getting these different shades. It's looking semi-abstract and I love this sort of subject here because you've just got the sky, the waterfall and the mountains. And I'm just sort of, sort of scratching into the surface as well to lift off some sort of linear lines there to create texture and to allow those marks to lead your eye to the waterfall there. I'm applying some colours now with the palette knife again just to create some more marks on this mountainside.
So as you can see here, I'm just painting a few more light highlights using the white titanium with the palette knife to create sort of a little bit of drama of light against the dark of the mountain there and using some linear lines to lead the eye through from the foreground into the middle distance as well. Diagonals work so well, but keeping everything really, really simple. I love to finish off my paintings with a spatter. I've watered down the white titanium and I'm using my round brush to spatter and to finish this painting. And that's all the details I'm going to use. So here is the finished painting. As you can see, I've kept it really simple, but it's still got some lovely atmosphere. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful into guiding you how to keep your paintings really simple. Don't overcomplicate them and don't put all the detail in, especially at the beginning. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget, if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, why not subscribe to my channel where you will get updates of my latest videos. Thank you again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.